On this Tuesday night, the government defends mega cruise tourism deal with global ports. Plans also unveiled for a mega transformation of Fort James. An ABS News exclusive, Royal Ten Antigua nails completion. The general manager promises a unique feature. Issues of equity and access will dominate discussions as ministers of education across the OECS meet here at the Sugar Ridge Resort. I'm Garfield Burford. I'll tell you about this major meeting. Residents and the staff of the Fines Institute are now at their temporary location. I'm Sherilyn Beza and I'll tell you all about the move later in our newscast. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening, it is Tuesday night. Welcome to the evening news here on ABS and Tigas News Authority. I am Terry Andrew. And I'm Alejandra Robinson. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin this evening with news that big changes are on the horizon for Antigua tourism. The government of Antigua and Barbuda has entered into an agreement with Global Ports Holding to invest more than 80 million U.S. dollars in the development of the cruise tourism port in St. John's. Well, ABS is Sharon Miller-Taswell was at today's press conference, and Sharon joins us here in studio live tonight. Sharon, big news to tell us about. Very big news, Terry and Ali. This agreement with the world's largest independent cruise port operator will immensely change the landscape of Antigua. It promises to boost tourism and promises no jobs will be lost. Antigua and Barbuda to be at the top of the food chain. Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown says we can do so by enhancing our existing paradise and focus on the island's main cruise port in St. John's. Prime Minister Brown says if we do nothing, tourists will go elsewhere. At this time, our cruise product literally is rated the worst in the Caribbean. But in order to compete, the government needs capital. If we could have done it alone, we would have done it alone. In fact, we have tried. Under the terms of the 30-year concession agreement between the government of Antigua and Barbuda and Global Ports Holding, known as GPH, the group will take over the management of cruise ports in Antigua in exchange for infrastructure and debt payments, wiping away the 21 million U.S. dollar debt from the Nevis Pier. In addition, GPH will complete the fifth berth, which will allow the port to handle Oasis-class ships, which can carry 6,000 passengers, plus enhancements of the current Heritage Mall properties and the development of more retail space and food and beverage facilities. And this, the Fort James Beach. The government has plans to bring land-based tourism to another level. Fort James Beach will boast activities such as zip lining, swim up bar, amphitheater, and even go-karts. We now have an opportunity in which we can have a net amount and we'll have a net amount paid to the government annually so that Global Ports will pay us a head tax of one US dollar. It is expected that within 24 months we should get up to at least a million tourists. So that will yield us at least one million US dollars a year. Here's how 83 million U.S. dollars will be spent, 21 million to extinguish the bond with ACB, 30 million to construct the new pier, 25 million to construct new shops, 5 million grants to fund local entrepreneurship, 2 million to spruce up Heritage Key for a total of $83 million. There is an inverse or adverse relationship between what the ports get from the cruise lines in every market. We are drowning. Every port is strangling with a rope around its neck because the cruise lines refuse to move the needle. They give zero. But this new agreement will help change the tide. We have uh, managed to get Global Port to agree to a minimum of 600,000 passengers. So in other words, even if we fall short or they fall short of delivering, we are guaranteed the, the head tax on 600,000 passengers. Attorney General Stedroy Benjamin says there is absolutely nothing to fear in this agreement. We are satisfied that there's nothing in the agreement that should be concerning the Antiguans to say that this agreement is against the best interest of all the parties concerned.
This new port will also increase employment, especially starting with the construction phase. Prime Minister Brown also promised no jobs will be lost. And I want to reiterate here that there will be no displacement. There will uh, be no severance or uh, let's say no terminations. We intend to maintain the full employment at uh, St. John's Development Corporation. And the global ports won't compete with taxi drivers. There's plans for an electric fleet. Electric charging stations will be installed. When do we intend to start this transition and when do we hope to complete the process. It seems like there's a lot with St. James Beach. So is there going to be phases and when can we start to see some changes happening? Uh, we are ready to proceed quite relatively fast. So I hope to have the closing of the final transaction probably in the next uh, 90 to 120 days. It should be ready by the summertime next year, but definitely be ready for October, November next year. And we hope to improve the traffic quite substantially. Now Thank that is just for the fifth birth or that's everything that we've seen? No, the fifth birth is the most important thing. The fifth birth has to be finished first. We are just a tenant in the countries we go. At the end of the day, the landlord is the government. Making Antigua and Barbuda a competitive player in the Eastern Caribbean islands. The agreements can be terminated at the end of the 30 years. Now, Global Ports Holding could bid for a further 10 years, but the government is under no obligation. Also, at the end of the 30 years, all assets remain the ownership of the government and the people of Antigua. As Global Ports said repeatedly in the press conference, we are only the tenants. I'm Sharon Miller-Taswell, ABS News. Well, thanks so much, Sharon. And in this ABS News exclusive, the Royal Ten Antigua is to boast a feature never before seen on the island. The resort's general manager says these are overwater bungalows. Well, Christian Langrid uh, has also assured that work has intensified ahead of the soft launch of the luxury property on the 1st of May. ABS's Rakib Aparicio was on site today and has our story. What had been the Grand Royal Antiguan is now the Royal Ten Antigua. After a massive makeover by the new owners, the Sunwing Travel Group, we sought an update just over two months before it is expected to open its doors. General Manager Christian Langlade gave us a tour of the facility. He says the process is moving smoothly. Uh, we have a lot of uh, assistant dedication. It starts with the, the customs, the harbour, uh, bringing the materials in. Um, everybody's been extremely patient with us and very helpful. Landglade indicated the rooms are 90% complete. He says they are now only lacking amenities and furniture. He says workers will soon begin the installation of utilities. We will have a reverse osmosis water production plant, electricity. Um, we will have facilities for the employees for about 600 employees. The hotel will have at least three restaurants, a performance stage, a gymnastics facility, a spa and what Langley describes as overwater bungalows. We call them the chairman's overwater bungalow. Uh, it consists of about 1100 square feet of surface with a, a beautiful overwater villa. That's going to be a very exciting project in a deep bay. He says the bungalows will be the first on the island. Langlade explained why the resort had failed to meet previous completion deadlines. It's proven to be a little bit more complicated. You know that we had extremely bad weather in uh, December. It has delayed by six weeks the uh, structural work, the ground works, but we are catching up. The 288 room property will both add to the country's room stock, as well as serve as a significant drive of employment. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. Meanwhile, Royal Ten Antigua will employ hundreds of people by later this year. The resort staged a two-day job fair last week, seeking 300 workers. It is now promising to, to be more than double that figure by later this year. We should hike up uh, the amount of employees for the second round at the beginning of the next high season towards end of September. So we will be doing an additional recruitment. So at full speed, we expect the hotel to have approximately 650 employees. This is especially good news for the nearly 2,000 prospective employees who attended the job fair at the Multipurpose Cultural Center. The general manager broke down the numbers. And we hosted on the first day about 850 potential candidates. And we saw on Friday close to 970, 1,000 talented uh, young people. He says another opportunity will also be extended to budding tourism talent.
We will be hiking up. For example, we'd like to take some young students on board starting from next September, October when they graduate. Um, so the, there's a whole range of demographics and positions that will be open. Well, there were fewer traffic accidents last month compared with the same month in 2018. The latest figures were revealed by Assistant Superintendent Elson Kwame during an interview with ABS's Shannon Jarvis. The head of the police traffic department, Assistant Superintendent Elson Kwame, says there has been a reduction in the number of vehicular accidents for the month of January 2019. January 2018 to January 20, 2019. In 2018, we had a total of 250 traffic accidents in January, 250, and this year we have 205. So we see a reduction in, um, in the figures for January, January of 2019, and I hope this will continue throughout the, um, the rest of the month. It is a welcome reduction, but the police have a cause for concern. Most of the crashes have taken place on the outskirts of St. John's, and the police have their own theories why. More accidents than we, 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 we have in the city. The reason being, the city is already congested and persons tend to build up more speed. There is another warning to motorists to exercise caution on the nation's roads. Stiffer penalties, stiffer measures in place. We'll have to increase in our mobile patrol, our radar check and so on and see how best we could cut down on these amount of accidents that we are having. He has also promised to increase patrols to keep all road users safe. Shannon Jarvis reporting for ABS News. Well, we learn here today of high-level discussions being held right here on island about ways to improve educational outcomes across the sub-region. The fourth OECS Council of Ministers of Education opened at the Sugar Ridge Resort this morning. There will be a laser focus on access and equity, as we hear from Garfield Burford. Honorable Michael S. Brown, Minister of Education, Science and Technology, Antigua and Barbuda. All the trappings befitting a major sub-regional event and a picture-perfect setting to match. And to take in the awesomeness of God's beautiful creation. Some of the brightest minds in education in the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States have gathered for two days of talks. They will discuss the shortcomings, among them less than desirable outcomes. When only 22% of the students, not the cohort who are eligible to sit the exam, but 22% of the cohort who sit the exam get five less than five subjects, or get, sorry, get five or more subjects in CSEC, then we have a serious problem of failure. But amidst the challenges, there is the fierce urgency of now to find the solutions. OECS Director General Dr. Didicus Jules has pinpointed where the real problem lies. We spend more money on education as a percentage of government expenditure in the OECS than all of the OECD countries. So the problem is not money. The problem is wastage. And Failure in the system is not a problem of students' inability to learn or teachers' incapacity to teach. It is systemic. But education Minister the Honorable Michael Brown enthralled the audience with his own experiences and achievements in the education system. His message was clarion. It is the key to understanding the distinction in enforcing equity and access is that people are always more important than paper. The ministers and their delegations will be sharing innovative ideas and successful practices. The ceremony over, it's time for the discussions and the decisions. Thousands of students and their parents across the sub-region will be keenly following to see that the results match the rhetoric. Godfrey Burford, ABS News. Well, Barbudans are set to go to the polls Wednesday, March 27th for the Barbuda Council elections. Governor General Sir Rodney Williams made the announcement in a statement Monday. And running on the Barbuda People's Movement, the BPM ticket is Kelsey Joseph, Freeston Thomas, Jackie Frank, and Sharina Meyer. On the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party, the ABLP ticket, Hesketh Daniel, Kelsina Burton George, Ralton Lynch, and Arthur Nibbs. Lorna Simon is appointed as the supervisor of elections. The last Barbuda Council election was held March 27, 2017. 
Also here for us on this uh, Tuesday night, beehive centipedes and unsanitary working and living conditions are a thing of the past for residents and staff at the Fines Institute. The move to its new temporary home is complete and welcomed by all. ABS's Sherilyn Beezer paid them a visit. The residents and staff are more comfortable and now in a safer location. The move has been fully completed, just a uh, little minor areas to do. So we are all in, the residents are in, but there's still some fine tuning, which we are doing. They are thrilled with the new facility. And the residents, everybody has been elated. Everybody is happy, even the critics. Well, it's remarkable. It, what, what, let me see, how should I put it? To me, it's like a five star. <laughs> to me, it's more like a positive. You understand? And over there, it's what I would call one negative. <laughs> well, it was a very good move. We're only hoping that um, in time to come, we'll get, we get the place fenced up more properly. Matron Christopher explains some of the renovations that have been made to ensure safety for the residents. So all the amenities are in, the rails, the hand grabs, the grab for the bathroom, um, basically security for the windows, such as some bars. We have gates at the stairs, and we also have all the banisters are placed with bars. The room locks were installed so the residents cannot lock themselves in but the rooms can be locked from the outside to prevent residents walking away. A wheelchair ramp is also being completed. Relaxing and recreation is also possible for the residents in the lounge, which will also be used for staff training. Basically, I just want to say thank you to the Minister of Public Works, that is Mr. Weston and his team, P.S. and Mr. Pye and all the others. So of course I want to say thank you too to the Prime Minister who would have recognized the importance of caring for the elderly. The matron assured that at no time during the protest was the care of the residents compromised since there was always a skeletal staff. Plans are afoot to build a new Fines Institute. However, until such time, the nurses' hostel provides improved standards of living for the country's elderly. I'm Sherilyn Lee's reporting for ABS News. Now, the family of Sean Warner is close to learning the cause of death of their loved one after an alleged electrocution at Jolly Harbor on the 6th of November last year. The team of pathologists provided by the government is on island to perform a second autopsy. Today at 5 o'clock, we'll be meeting the, the pathologists before they do the autopsy. So it's me and my other families will be meeting today at 5. They need to see some, um, some of our um, pictures of what we have we took on the day. Ms. Warner shares what she hopes will be revealed in the second autopsy. We're looking for, um, for the answer, which is, I would say, the answer that he got shot. Well, the government is paying for this autopsy in full and the authorities are hoping it will provide much needed closure to the grieving family. Antigua and Barbuda is bullish on even closer ties with Chile. The South American country has dispatched a new top diplomat to the Twin Island state. His Excellency Francisco J. Bernales presented his credentials to the Governor General and met with the Prime Minister. ABS's Jessica Russell has our report. Prime Minister Brown welcomed Chile's new top diplomat and pointed to areas where both countries can deepen ties. We believe too that there are areas in which we can broaden the cooperation to include fisheries and uh, agriculture. We're trying to ensure food security and food sovereignty and clearly those areas in which we have significant, significant expertise. His Excellency Francisco J. Banales says the eventual signing of a free trade agreement will help to strengthen relations. The eventual signature of, of a, a free trade, trade agreement, agreement with, the, with the CARICOM. Right. So uh, that certainly you know, will, will boost you know, our relations, especially the, in, in, in areas that is quite important. Chile you know, have a, a good offer like, like uh, you know, uh, fish and, for example, pork and, 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 and chicken. 
Chilean President Sebastian Piñera expressed interest in signing such an agreement with CARICOM last year. Earlier, the ambassador presented his credentials to Governor General His Excellency Sir Ronnie Williams. The Governor General's deputy, Sir Claire Roberts, is honorary consul to Chile. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Now, in a follow-up on a story we told you about uh, last evening, where one man was shot by officers in Bolands. Here's more in this report. A continuous counter-narcotic operation was conducted by the Office of National Drug and Control Policy, the ONDCP, on Monday. It resulted in the apprehension of two men, Laurie Kenroy Marshall and Desmond Lewis, both from Jennings. Lewis, a customs officer, was apprehended in Golden Grove, where ONDCP officers seized just over one pound of cannabis from his vehicle. The estimated wholesale value of the drug is 4,500 EC dollars. Additionally, an amount of almost 6,000 EC dollars was seized. Lewis has been charged with possession and possession with intent to supply. Ongoing counter-narcotic operations conducted in the Bolands area led to the apprehension of Laurie Kenroy Marshall. He was shot in the leg by an officer after trying to evade members of the ONDCP. Director of the ONDCP, Lieutenant Colonel Edward Croft, says his officers followed a proper protocol to ensure a successful operation. I'm very satisfied that um, there was no injury to any of the ONDCP officers. And I am also satisfied that they have used all necessary force to preserve life and to ensure that um, there was not any harm. A search of Marshall's vehicle yielded four packages of cannabis. Laurie Kenroy Marshall is presently in stable condition at the Mount St. John Medical Center. Lieutenant Colonel Croft is confident that Marshall will assist the ONDCP with their continued investigations upon his discharge. He is known to law enforcement locally and internationally and has been previously convicted of several drug-related offenses. Well, ABS is taking a closer look this evening at Antigua and Barbuda's amazing architecture. The country is teeming with rich, or its country is teeming with its rich historical and cultural significance, standing as an echo of the past in a rich tapestry of Wadadli. Yes, you heard right, Wadadli, or Waladli, we should say, Director of Heritage Resources for the National Parks Antigua, Dr. Reginald Murphy, says French missionaries originally recorded Antigua's Amerindian residents as saying Waladli, not Wadadli. ABS's Rakib Aparicio takes a closer look. Antigua and Barbuda, the beach is just the beginning. As you journey further into a wonderful country, you'll be bombarded with a historically rich and varied culture. Director of Heritage Resources for the National Parks Antigua, Dr. Reginald Murphy, says his team has recorded well over 2,000 heritage sites. When you look about it, we had almost 200 sugar um, estates, wow. and each estate is a little village. He believes historical sites may not always be seen, but they are there. I call it intangible, sites that there's nothing on the surface, but they're there on the ground. These are the pre-Columbian sites, and we had close to 300 of those, and we don't know, I don't think I can find more than a half dozen of really good ones left. He says these historical sites can be found dotted across the island, lost in time, just waiting to tell their tale. One prominent historical site currently being restored is the Government House. Ambassador Lionel Hurst says the Government House has served as the home for Antigua Barbuda governors for well over 200 years, beginning in 1807. It seems to me that it is worthy of uh, preservation and uh, the um, those who occupy Government House are also of that view, as is the Cabinet of Antigua and Barbuda. Cultural Envoy for the Ministry of Culture, Barbara Paka, says the Government House will continue to serve. Well, I think the story of Government House, is, it's not just a history of overcoming adversity. It's a, his, it's a story about a place where people meet. And again, I was quite, I was gobsmacked when I first met the Governor General, and he said, let's make a garden and have an outdoor classroom for children. Ambassador Hurst indicated that the book will be published detailing the complete history of the government house. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News.
Now we have our first commercial break. The 2019 Rock Caribbean 600 kicked off in spectacular conditions of the, off the salt coast of Antigua for the 87 yachts uh, participating from 20 different countries. The 11th edition of the 600 nautical miles course circumnavigates 11 Caribbean islands starting from Fort Charlotte, English Harbor, and heads north as far as St. Martin and south to Guadeloupe, taking in Barbuda, Nevis, St. Kitts, Saba, and St. Barnes. The winners from the Olympic Games, the America's Cup, Volvo Ocean Race, and multiple world champions are all competing alongside passionate sailors, both young and old, in this year's work. 600 and if you see the pictures online uh, exquisite stuff, huh? yeah especially from Shirley's Heights looking to go over mm. there are exquisite pictures of the 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 sea the sea level and you know the sunset in the back there when they took off amazing pictures there online that you can see on the rock website of course you can follow the race uh, the leaders those that are speeding ahead out in front at first yeah you can also check their website for that and their facebook page All that's right. amazing stuff we take our first commercial break here on this Tuesday night. We're only getting started, of course, on the ABS Evening News. Sports is up next. Windies will pursue 50th One Day International against England. And also the leading marksman in the ABFA's Premier Division has a goals target in mind. We'll tell you what that is when we return. Stay with us.